Nobody else can put in the work for you. Nobody else can do it. Derek, what strategies from the buy side should you employ to get a strategic edge over the seller? What information should remain disclosed uh, that you should not say if not asked and what should be requested? Uh, thank you once again. And I don't know, you know, the, use your f***ing brain and don't say things that are too, would weaken your position in a negotiation. Now, there's some things that you have to be open with. If you're, if you're too quiet and you don't disclose anything, then the counterparty can't take you seriously because they don't understand what your real needs are. They don't understand what you want or what you, what you think you want or what your needs are in the circumstance. So they just can't take you seriously and they won't be invested in the communication. And then, you know, negotiations break down because of that. So I think you have to be pretty clear about, you know, some of the main things of, you know, who you are and what you want and what you're trying to accomplish and how they might do that. Um, but then you also have to, you know, you, you wouldn't necessarily say the top dollar you're willing to pay for something. So, well, what's the most you can afford to pay? Well, you, you know, you, you might have a number in mind, but I wouldn't say that number. I would say, well, it depends on the circumstance. If the deal was, if the deal was good enough, found the right property or the right circumstance, I'd be, you know, be willing to pay more. If um, if it was, you know, lesser quality, then obviously, then you know, the market would demand a lower price. So it depends on the circumstances that we arrive to. Um, so be, you know, be be mindful about that. But, you know, again, you got to be open enough that you're credible, that you're taken seriously, that you're, you're perceived credibly, you're taken seriously. But you also have to be smart enough that. You know, if you if you're trying to buy a house, you know that whatever the list the list price is three twenty five, and you say, well, you know, well, you got three hundred and twelve grand, but you're offering them two seventy five. When you offer them the two seventy five, you wouldn't necessarily say, well, hey, I could go to three twelve. No dumbass, Just offer them the two seventy five and see what they say. They might counter back at two ninety five. You might counter back at two eighty five, two eighty three point five. And get to the 285 or something, you know, 287 or whatever the number is. If you say, "Hey, I got a, you know, I'm offering 275, but I got 312." Well, if you're willing to pay the 312, then you, then the price is going to be 312. And you could you could have saved 25 grand if you dealt with it intelligently. So, to be mindful about uh, you know some of those type of pieces of information, and uh, you know, don't don't piss on your own feet or do something that would be you know against your own interest. Thomas says, uh, thank you, Derek, Andre, and Greg. What you said about progress seeming to happen in a burst hit home. I'm on the verge of securing a new job that was created for me. I can identify specific behaviors that got me to this point and double down on them. I'm sure the work I've been doing with Travis and Tony and the thoughts you put in my head every week have contributed significantly. So thank you for that. Now you're welcome, man. And thank yourself. Thank yourself for putting in the work. Nobody else can put in the work for you. Nobody else can do it. All right. So thank yourself for putting in the work and, uh, you know, congratulations for that. And, you know, you show up consistently. You show up, uh, you're here. You ask intelligent questions on, on our mastermind calls. Um, I expect to see you at live events consistently. And people that don't come to the live events consistently, they're not going to be in the mastermind group for long. We're just going to get them out of there. They're not going to be allowed to renew. Jason says, Derek, uh, thanks for the great guests. Uh, the way they think speaks to their success. That's a fact. That's a fact. Jasan's at every damn event. Jasan's with me all the time. I uh, went to the UFC fights together. He's always at our live events. Uh, he's been in my construction sites, been in my office. We've, we've spent, done numerous things together. He's a guy that shows up consistently all the time. Uh, Salvador says, uh, thank you, Andre and Greg. Uh, Matt says, uh, those rats are going to compound their gains. <laughs> They are going to, those rats, imagine, bro. Imagine that someone has rats in their home and someone goes door to door to sell them a solution is, hey, let me get rid of those rats in your house. And somebody says, nah, there's only a couple. <laughs> imagine, nah, there's only a couple. I don't want, I don't want to pay 200 bucks. I don't want to pay 200 bucks to get rid of a couple of rats. There's only a couple. Well, what's it going to cost when, you know, when the rats start chewing on electrical wires and, you, and your home burns down? 
You know, would you pay a couple hundred bucks to avoid that? When the rats have hundreds of offspring over time, and the new rats and the new rats and the new rats come, and they piss and shit in all your walls, and your home, your whole home smells like rodent feces and rodent urine, would you pay a couple hundred bucks to get rid of that? That's amazing. That's amazing. Ah, it's just a couple of rats. No problem. That's amazing. Uh, Nicholas says, Derek, Andre, and Greg, gentlemen, thank you for your time and wisdom on mental fortitude. In summary, short-term price is not necessarily reflective of the value you are building. Compounding takes time, even decades. Don't get discouraged. Learn to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations. Someone who puts in their short-term Someone who puts their short-term emotions over their long-term goals is destined for failure. Fact. Fact. Uh, mentors are the best cheat code in life. Invest in yourself and absorb all the knowledge you can. Accept reality for what it is and refocus your energy. That you know, Get into that a positive thought loop. Remain disciplined. Developing emotional control is key to overcoming the obstacles uh, along the way in order to become a winner long-term. Uh, well said. I, I really enjoy your summaries, actually, Nicholas. You, I, I enjoy the summaries. Um, every week you have a, a little bl you know, blurb that you put in like this. And, uh, you know, they tend to be really on point. So uh, I enjoy reading those. I enjoy knowing that you're, you know, some of the main points that I'm trying to convey for the week, you know, are in fact getting through and that you're, you're seeing that clearly. And, you know, changing those few thoughts in your head... I guess I say it this way, you know, if you if you changed a few thoughts, if you start engaging in a couple thoughts that were more productive, more, more industrious, pretty soon you'd modify your behavior. So if you start having a few thoughts that were more industrious, pretty soon you start engaging in more industrious behaviors because you're not a goddamn fool. That's just what an intelligent creature would do. It'd be a normal person if you had... If you had better knowledge, you'd engage in better behaviors. It'd be a normative effect. It'd be a normal thing. And if you engaged in better behaviors consistently, wouldn't better outcomes be the natural be the natural byproduct? So if a person engaged in more intelligent thoughts, if they had better information in their head, and they took action on that information consistently, the normal thing that would happen would be better outcomes. So when I see those summary statements like that, it, it lets me know of like, oh, Nicholas is on his way to better outcomes. He changed in his thoughts. You modify a few thoughts, put in some better ones. Pretty soon you're going to engage in better behaviors. You do that for a period of time. Of course, you'd have better outcomes. It'd be the natural thing that would happen. So I, I really enjoy reading those summaries. And um, I hope other people take that to heart. That I hope they're making that summary in their own mind every week on some of the philosophic things we talk about here. And you know, also the, a deep dive on the, the conversations we have in the specific course material. You do those two things. You know, when, when you have that extra information in your head, and you and you're using it intelligently, you know, great outcomes are. I mean, if you do that consistently, you're going to have great outcomes. So how, how would it be otherwise? Somebody explained to me. You really have to self sabotage for it to be otherwise. Some people are confused. They say, Derek, Derek. What is the Ten Commandments of Wealth? Not the Ten Maybes of Wealth. It's the Ten Core Things that you're going to need to know about in detail if you'd like to accumulate significant wealth in your lifetime. Click this link up here to find more information exactly what is the Ten Commandments of Wealth, how is the program structured, what's inside of it, how are you going to benefit from it. If you're doing well already and you'd like to do better, click that link and find out more. There's over 100 hours of content in this program. I've interviewed dozens, dozens of world champions that shared what it took for them to win to be the top, top, top Hall of Fame athletes in their respective areas. And I brought a lot of other superstars in there from business, from legal, people that are real world entrepreneurs and made serious money as I have myself. We all share with you what are the foundations you're going to need to know if you want to be successful yourself. Be a chooser, not a loser. Click that link, find out more. I'll see you inside.